The purpose of this podcast is to educate and inform. It is no substitute for professional care by your doctor or your qualified health care professional. Never disregard or delay professional medical advice because of something you've heard on this podcast or in any linked material. Guests who speak on this podcast express their own opinions, experience, and conclusions. Dr. Shirley neither endorses nor opposes any particular opinion discussed on this podcast. The views expressed on this podcast have no relation to those of any academic, hospital, practice, institution, or other entity with which Dr. Shirley may be affiliated. Welcome to Forever Fab, the podcast on fashion, the art of living, and all things beauty. This podcast is curated by Dr. Shirley Medea, MD, as the definitive source of holistic wellness through beauty. Welcome to Forever Fab, the podcast dedicated to fashion, the art of living well, and all things beauty. I'm your host, Dr. Shirley Madare, your purveyor of this most definitive source of living your most beautiful life. Today, we are recording in the sassy, sexy, snazzy, swanky new studios of One of One Productions. Kudos, congratulations to my podcast team. What an amazing achievement. This place is really cute. So if you'd like to be interviewed on my podcast, come on over. It would be, today it would be really easy for me to talk about the obvious with our next guest. It's because she's absolutely amazing at what she does. I mean, amazing. But rather than get to the obvious, which we'll get to, I'd like to get to the root of her talent. You like that root? It's, it's, you know, there's a double meaning to it. The root of her (laughs) talent, right? And um, find out more about what motivates her to basically create a more beautiful world. Amoy Pitters, welcome. Thank you. Amoy is a dreamer. She was born in Jamaica, and she came to the United States when she was very young. But she also dreams in other ways, and we'll talk to her about that later. She's been working at her craft since, was it eight years old? (laughs) That's when I realized that. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. You've been working working since you were eight. I know. (laughs) Child labor. (laughs) Working at your craft, which you love, and it shows, since you were eight. And let me tell you. I've known you for many years. I'm so honored to be in your space. But I have to tell you, I thought I knew a lot about you until I just said, you know, listen, let me just try to Google Amoy <laughs> and figure out. I There are so many things about you I didn't know. Mm. Really fantastic, <laughs> fabulous things. So I hope we can talk about some of those things today. So welcome and thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So let's start with when you were a young girl. What okay. did you dream about? Oh, my God. It was I always knew I I wanted to do something creative. Um, You know, just seeing my mom do her hair, like putting her hair on sponge rollers at night (laughs) or my Barbies, Uh, you know, even going to the hair salon when we were old enough. And I was like, I like this. I like creating using my hands. Yes. And, you know, in school, I always gravitate to all the artistic like art class, drawing, coloring books, just whatever was artsy. That was me. Yes. So I knew that I wanted to. Definitely be in the arts. Okay. But doing hair was like, okay, I remember one Christmas I got a Barbie. It had like the big head and all the hair. (laughs) And I I just could not put it down. I did everything with the hair. So Mm -hmm. that's when I knew, okay. And when I changed my hair for my third grade class photo, oh, my mother did my hair, like, you know, the ribbons of this. And I went to school. I was like, I do not want my hair like this. (laughs) So I changed it. And when we got the photos back, she was like, wait a minute. That's not how I did your hair. And I was like, oh, I did it myself. Yeah. <laughs> so that's when I knew definitely this is what I love. This is my passion. So you were in third grade. Yes. And that was eight years old, wasn't it? Yes. So you had your own ideas about what you wanted your hair to look like. And your mother did it one way. Yes. But then you kind of, okay, yeah. Always okay. doing it Good differently. for you. Good for you. So when exactly did you know so it's something that you wanted to do when you were eight you loved playing with hair you loved playing with the barbies but at what point did you think to yourself i love doing this but this is really my calling definitely 
and 11th grade in high school. Okay, that's also early. Or maybe early. 10th grade. Yeah. Because I had all my friends come into my house yeah. to do my hair. And I'm like, listen, my mother's going to be home at 5 o'clock. <laughs> you guys have to get out now. <laughs> it, it became a point where I was hiding my friends in the basement. Really? Yes, because my mother was like, why is all this people? Why do I smell burnt hair? What the hell is going on? <laughs> and, you know, my sister and I, we would experiment with our hair. Mm. I'll never forget, you know, the rap group Salt and Pepper. Salt and Pepper. Their, their album came out where they had like that side swept yeah, thing. The side sweep, yeah. Yeah, so my sister and I was like, we want our hair just like that. You know, like the honey blonde. Yes. So we went to the drugstore with our allowance. I'll never forget it. We bought dark and lovely honey blonde color. And we had just gotten relaxers. Of course, you're not supposed to relax and color. And color the same time. So nobody told us that. So we had this black hair, jet black hair. Oh, my god. We thought that doing this box color was going to get our hair that color. We're going to be like so and pepper. Girl, <laughs> it was like maybe a week later, our hair was dry and rough and shedding. <laughs> and, and brittle. Exactly. So that was the big first lesson of do not color your hair at home yourself. But we loved it. I continued for the prom, high school prom. I did not go because I did all my friends' hair. You missed your own prom? Yes. Because my mother was like, we Because you were working? Going. I was working. Um, the class photo, high school photos, everyone had the same bun that was done by but me. You. <laughs> So, you know, I really knew. And then my friend was like, oh, are you going to charge us? And I was like, hell yeah, I'm charging you guys. <laughs> so I charged my friends maybe like $15, $20. And I made so much money that the next day, my prom dress that my mom bought me, yes. I rented. we rented a lemma, my boyfriend and I, because he was like cutting hair. My little boyfriend was like cutting everybody's hair. Oh, my God. And we came, we went to the city with all the money that we made from doing hair yes. and him cutting hair. We rented our lemma. We had our nice little time. We went to Ponderosa Steakhouse. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so that's what we did after the prom. So I was like, wait a minute. After high school, I think I want to go to beauty school. Mm. So that's how the whole thing of business yes. came to my head. And then seeing my parents, they were entrepreneurs. Yes. They didn't really have to punch anybody's time clock. And the freedom they had was amazing. Yes. Except for us, like, getting busted at school. Right. At school, I was like, damn, why can't she be at a real job? <laughs> you know, but... Um, so that kind of set the tone. Yeah. Like, I need to, you know, work for myself. Work for yourself. Yeah. So you went to beauty school. Yes, I went to beauty school, which, of course, from Jamaican parents that came, you know, to America, they work hard. They, you know, the vision is like, I want all my kids to go to college. Yes. And, you know, it's like this stigma of, what do you mean your kid, your daughter's not in college? Well, oh, what yeah. is she doing with her life? So yes. it was kind of like that. So my mother was like, what do you mean? You're not going to college? What kind of life are you going to have as a hairdresser? Right. So I was like, oh, my God. So I tried to sneak behind their back to get a loan to go to beauty school. Oh, my goodness. And you I were couldn't motivated. do it because I was still living at home. I was underage. So I said to, I, you know, I'm always trying to make a deal. <laughs> So I said to my dad, please, this is only $10,000. Could you just pay for me to go to beauty school? I promise I'll make you proud. And he was like, oh. So him and my mother had a talk. So he was like, all right, as long as you go September. So I graduated, uh, you know, June. Yes. And he was like, you're not going to be sitting around this house. Yes, so for you, a year. Exactly. So he was like, just go. And I was like, oh, my God, thank you. So yes. I knew I had to, you know, really make them proud and go. And I mean, I didn't know what proud was. I thought right. it was just getting a job getting right a job. after. Yeah. yeah, and paying him back. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, to tell it all, like after graduating from beauty school, there was a job, you know, they put the job list in. So there yes. was a salon in the city for assistance. So I filled it out and I was like, oh, I think I want to work in the city. And um, I filled the application and I got the job. You got the job. So that was my introduction is to go into the city yep. every day. I yes. grew up in the Bronx. Yep. And uh, it was just a different world. Yes. I like getting on the train. And, I, you know, the salon was like on 56 between Park and Lexington. Oh, so it gave you an opportunity exactly. to be independent, right. to, to be mobile, yes. to go to work. And yes, really so do it was really nice. And um, it was the salon was uh, it wasn't just only for black women. It was like a nice, you know, mix yeah. of women. It was diverse. Could, yeah, it was yeah. a diver that diversity was great. And I was like, oh, my God. So the lady that owned the salon, she was actually from London. Oh, wow. And she had a salon in London, and this, she opened the salon there. And, of course, I was the assistant. So my second day on the job, it was, it was, everything was going great. I was learning a lot. And they, they gave me, a, like, a, um, a toilet brush. And the guy was like, oh, you got to clean the bathroom, honey. No. And I was looking at him like, clean the bathroom? No, I'm a stylist. Yeah. <laughs> so I went home, and I told my dad. And he was like, um... 
Well, you're an assistant if that's a part of the job. Mm. You do what you're told. You do what you're told. And oh, I was like, boy. but I'm not cleaning nobody's toilet. What do you mean? I, said, I only do that here. <laughs> I only do that at home. So he was like, well, I'm not saying you're going to clean toilets, but if that's a part of the job description as an assistant yeah. to clean up after the senior stylist yes. and your job is to clean the bathroom, that's what you, have to you do. do it. So I, w- I sucked it up. I was like, <laughs> so the next day, he got cleaned his own bathroom, whatever. Yeah. And I knew that that was not it for me. Yes. So, you know. Meaning I, you knew you didn't want to be an assistant it, or a number exactly, two. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, I took my training. They gave us really nice training courses. So I took that really seriously. The senior stylists that were working there, they took me under their wing. They taught me a lot. You Good. know, how to blow dry with a round brush yes. and just like different textures of hair. Yes. So I was like, all right, let me take this serious because I am not going to be cleaning toilets in no <laughs> salon. You were self-motivated. <laughs> exactly. So to make a long story short. The salon only stayed open for less than a year. Oh, wow. So those clients that were going there, they were paying maybe like close to $1,000 to get a weave done at the time. Oh, okay, yeah. So So they had no place to go. No place to go. So me, I got the training. The other stylists that were working, they were moving on to other things. Mm -hmm. One of the other stylists actually moved to London to work with her. To work with this, okay. So I was like, oh, my God, what do I do? So a few of the clients had no place to go. So I said to the other guy that was her partner, I was like, well... You know, while I'm going to work in the Bronx, there was a salon right next door to my mom's restaurant. So I rented a chair there. And the salon, the clients were coming there. So there, Wait a I minute, was, the Park Avenue clients ex- were coming there, to the Because it was a Bronx. special technique <laughs> of weaving that yes. nobody knew how to do but us at the salon. Oh, I see. So those handful of clients that wanted to travel, I was like, well, yes. just come here and I'll yes. charge you half the price. I was yes. so young, I didn't. Yes, you didn't. But at the time, I was like, okay, I'm making four or $500 for a weave. Yes. I'm like 19 years old. I'm paying this guy like no rent in the Bronx. Yes. So to me, that was like, oh my God, I'm rich. Yes. <laughs> so I did that. And it was great, but I knew that I wanted to go back to the city. Okay. So my friend that was a stylist there, she was like, yeah, come back to the city. So I rented a chair in a Russian salon. Oh. And I bought those clients there, and I built more clientele. Yes. I took my time to build more clientele. So then yes. the opportunity came up for me to work with a stylist that she was working with in Paris. She started oh to goodness. go to the shows in Paris. To the fashion shows. Right. So she was mm-hmm. like, oh, my God, I'm going to introduce you to this lady. You have to meet her. So she was like, there's a job. I want you to to meet, to go, you know, with her. And it was like in the Hamptons. I knew nothing about the Hamptons. Yes, yes. And I was like, how do, it was like at 5 o'clock in the morning, the call time. Oh, my so gosh. So I was like, how the hell am I going to get to the Hamptons <laughs> at 5, five o'clock, o'clock in the, in the morning. morning? But I made it happen. Wow. Did the job, met the lady. Coincidentally, we had the same exact birthday. Oh, my gosh. And she was so nice. Oh and I was gosh. just like, oh, I like this. Talk about serendipity. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It was goodness. crazy. And I've never seen anything like it. I mean, Me, it was her like. home or just the no, Hamptons in Well, general. the Hamptons itself. Yeah. But, like, the photo shoot. Oh. It was like Stephen Mizell. Oh, it was wow. like a crazy. The, uh, it wasn't Pat McGrath, but it was someone along the line of yes, Pat McGrath yes. that did the makeup. Celebrity and, makeup artist. Right. And Odile Gilbert. She was a hairstylist. Oh, I mean, I didn't goodness. really pay attention to, you know know what it really what it I, meant. I didn't even know who Stephen Mizell was I right. was just like okay whatever but did you know who Odile Gilbert was I, I mean I did because my friend told me about her and I was just like on it I mean she's a white French lady so yeah. I was just like oh my god oh, I should god. say Odile Gilbert right exactly <laughs> so it was just an amazing experience and uh, she was like you know I love the way you work you know I want you to come to Paris to work to oh do the gosh. couture shows and I was like okay you know I was just I was just so young and you know, so she invited me and I went. And yes, so this is about to, you're yes. about to tell us your Cinderella story. <laughs> because that was one of my other questions. What is your Cinderella story? And then I have another one at a little bit later, which is what is your, what was your greatest aha moment? So oh, go on okay. with the Cinderella story first. So that, the Cinderella story, she invites me to Paris to do, it was in 1997, the end of 97, or 98. Yes. And it was a Christian Dior Couture show. And J'adore it was Dior. Salvador Dali. That was was the, that was the theme? The theme of the oh show. Oh, my gosh. So it was a lot of finger waves from yes. the Chinese, you know, pin Again, up. Again, gra- serendipity, fortuitous. Right. Like finger waves, yeah. Dolly, Paris, the it's, Bronx. Exactly. <laughs> so I was like, oh, my God. So we, I get there. We're prepping the hair. So she gave us all these wigs to prep, finger waves. So I'm, like, busting the finger waves out. Right. And they were like, everyone was looking at me like, this little young girl know what she's doing. And right. I was like, they were like, well, how did you know how to finger wave so well? And I was like, come on, dude, folks. I'm coming from the Bronx, the era of the dance hall right. queen. And Pepper had finger waves. And at right. One <laughs> so that's all these girls asked for was finger, finger waves with waves. the black gel. Yes. So I did that. And she was like, 
the day of the show, I got pulled. So I was like, oh, my God, I fucked up. <laughs> I'm getting sent home. I was, like, so nervous. So she was and like, this was your first time in Paris? Yeah. Oh, my and gosh. And we were doing the show uh, at the opera house. Oh, my gosh. At the Epic. opera. Legendary. And we were downstairs, like, in the basement in a tunnel. We yes. set up the hair and makeup there. And she pulled me midway through the show, and she was like, I want you to go and do the designer's hair. Because oh. you're doing such an amazing job. So everybody kind of stopped. Because when yes. you get pulled, you're like, shit, did I you do something You thought you were in trouble. Wrong? Yeah, I was like, oh, my God, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> so she was like, go to do this. So a car came to pick me up. It was like a Mercedes. I was yeah. like, okay, whatever. <laughs> so I got to his apartment. It was John Galliano because wow. he was designing for Christian Dior amazing at the time. Amazing at the time. That's right. So I gave him finger waves. I remember that. Yes, <laughs> and there was two French was singers. You. Yes, it was Fantastic. two French singers, native. I don't mm-hmm. know if you ever heard of them. I did their hair as well. In, in Finger Waves. Yes, in Finger Waves. And Amazing. they performed at the show, at the, at the show. finale for the show. So that was pretty much my... That's an epic Cinderella yeah, story. Yeah, and I had no clue. I was just like doing well, my work. these people were. Yeah, so at the end of the show, you know, we usually go back to the atelier and talk about yes. the show. So she was like, oh my God, you did a great job. And everybody was like, oh my God. And these were like stylists that have been in the business for years. Yes. That I didn't even think that I would be rubbing elbow That's next right. to them. Because Never even they were like it, right? much older. I was, mm-hmm. Here I am, like 20 years old. Yes. And... It didn't really dawn on me until she invited me back. Because I, I thought the next year, the next season, oh. which was in March. Oh my god! For ready to wear, for ready to wear. And so it you was, had just finished doing couture. Exactly. Okay. So now, oh my goodness. So okay. now, ready to wear, and I did like, uh, the, I think that was the only show I did that season because I was new. So ready to wear the next season was like Chanel. Yeah. Uh, John Paul Gaultier. Oh my gosh. Or Matt. It was like all these crazy designers that, you know, you only see in the magazine. Yes. And I was like, pinch me. Am I like really <laughs> here? Am I really here? Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty much how everything got started for me. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So now that I, it's, I'm still high off of the yeah. Cinderella story because I actually myself can't even believe it. Yeah. And I knew you had always had this so- somewhat fantastical life, but yeah. it seems fantastic right. on the surface. But you have to work and still oh, yeah. work oh, yeah. really hard. Yeah, it's a lot of hard work. It's I a mean, lot of hard work. People think that it's glamorous because you're traveling, you know, um, eventually you pick up some of those celebrities as private clients they're yep. flying you sometimes they fly you private sometimes you get to fly in the concourse you know yes. but it's it's a lot of work and uh it's also trusting because yeah. you now you're in their intimate space That's you right. see you hear a lot of things so you have to yes. keep your mouth shut of course and you have to produce good work yes no question and um you know you, you just keep building from there so it's, you, i mean your work kind of pretty much have to speak for itself yes, back then it does. you have no social media you right. had no you know right so that's how it all got started. Well, and congratulations. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> I love that story. Yeah. I could hear it again and again and I again. Know. It's just amazing. I can't believe it. It's so amazing. I know and I personally witness, since I'm also your client, thank oh. goodness, I, all, I personally witness what it's like to be a client in that salon. Yeah. You are warm, you're intimate, you're friendly, you're professional. You get the work done and thank the you. people who work for you yes. are also on point. Yes. There's There's... There's a knowing, there's an expectation mm-hmm. that you, you just get it yeah, done. Yeah, I mean, I definitely have a high expectation of myself and others that work for me. I mean, and for everyone that comes to the salon, I mean, you might come there, you might be sitting next to a supermodel, a singer, but right. everyone gets treated the same. The same, yeah. It's um, about the experience yes. and having the quality of your hair, you know, quality hair done. Right. So, yeah, it, it is a bar that's set because I do cater to a certain clientele, whether right. it's a celebrity, a lawyer, a professional doctor. woman, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, we're all women, right? Yeah. So it's like we just want to ha- be treated like princesses right. and have a nice experience. And, and we all want to be beautiful. Exactly. And yeah. that's what I create. Yes, you do. And, you know, at the salon, and that's what I do. Yes, that's, and, 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 that's and you how do everybody, it well. Look, it's not brain surgery. It's hair. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no fucking up with hair. Excuse my language. There's no okay. messing up. Yeah. It has to be done right, and yeah. all the clients have to have a good experience. That's right. So, you know, that's just what it is. And, it, and it's a beautiful thing. You yeah. also provide opportunities for yes. the people that work for yes, you. Yes, I do. Because you, you teach them. It's ongoing. Yes. And it's not as if they're just there to, you know, be the assistant. Right. I know that you've had oh, lots yeah. of chances I, to yes. give people opportunities. I do create a lot of opportunities. Yeah. And, you know, when that's the thing with business. People are going to come with different agendas, yes. right? So, I mean, over the years, I've hired and 
you know, people left, people got fired. And I do create an opportunity for everyone because someone gave me an opportunity. That's right. So yeah. it's what you do with it. Yeah. I knew what I had to do with my opportunity, and mm-hmm. I try to teach them, but there's only but so much you could there's teach There's only sometimes. so much. That's right. So, you know, unfortunately, some people come and go, and some people do take the opportunities, and they roll with it. Right. So, I mean, that's what life is about, right? Yeah, it is. So, yeah. It is. <laughs> And no one can do what you do. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so is there a particular philosophy that you live by? I mean, yes, hard work and, and yes, um, living life to the fullest and yes, teaching and providing opportunity. But every morning that you wake up, is there one thing that you think about in particular that just makes you get up and go? Yeah, I mean, I I started to put myself first. Mm. And I realized uh, when you're in business and you're so much intertwined yes. with your clients and your audience, you have to. And your career is your life. Yes. Yes. So I you, understand. you know, owning a business, you sometimes let go of yourself. You and it's all about your business. You go to yes. bed at night. You can't sleep because you're thinking. Yes. So I mean, I definitely figured out the balance of my business and my personal life. And. When I wake up in the morning, of course, you know, the first thing I'm saying is my prayer. Like, thank yes. God I made it through the night and, yes. you know, thankful for everything Gratitude. that I... Yes. So, but I've learned to put myself first, whether it's like I have to get up at 5.30 or 6.30 to get yeah. my workout done. Yes. A little right. bit of meditation because I know once I you. get out there... It's the world is it's not about me anymore, <laughs> no, especially the minute I walk in the salon. I could be having a bad day. Yes. It's not about me anymore. Right. It's about the clients. Right. And getting, you know, just doing my business and getting everyone done and yes. just make sure everybody have a nice experience. Right. So right. that's what I've learned to do. Just so, the balance. So finding self-care. the balance. Self-care. Okay. So gratitude and self-care. Yes. And gratitude is a form of self-care. Yes. Right? <laughs> Recognizing what you have, exactly. what you don't yes. have. And just, like you said, rolling yeah. with that. Yes. And working on yourself. I mean, I, you know, we all have challenges. And Absolutely. you have to, if you want to, uh, you know, I provide a service. And sometimes the clients come and they... Talk, you know, they talk. You talk to your hairstylist about everything. Yes. So I want to make sure that I'm kind of clear headed yes. for my clients to take on what they're gonna throw at me, and you know, right. and I try to give them the best advice, and I try to be honest. Yes. And, and just give it, yeah. And you are. Yeah. It's, and you know, going to the salon. And I give my like examples of, of what I live. You know, sometimes they ask, well, what can I do? And I'm like, well, maybe you need to take some time for yourself. Maybe right. you need to take a little vacation. Are right. you eating right? Right. So I try to give the advice that I give myself. Good for you. Yeah. So speaking of vacation, <laughs> wow. I mean, you've been traveling since you were 15. I mean, for a long time. And especially with your career, you have, tra- are you on your fifth passport Oh, now? my God. <laughs> my passports are crazy. Yeah, but- <laughs> crazy. Yeah. So you have traveled near and far and far and farther. Yeah. Uh, for your life, for your career, and, yes. and just because, yes. because it's something that you love to do. Yes. So speaking of traveling and traveling extensively, I'm going to ask you to name three places on your bucket list. So places wow. you haven't been yet, okay. which is going to be hard. Um, <laughs> three places. Definitely Australia. Okay. Um, Bora Bora. Okay. And uh, Thailand. Okay, yeah. all reasonable. <laughs> and knowing you, you'll probably get those all done oh, within the year. And Iceland. And Iceland, okay. yes. <laughs> you'll probably get them all done within the year. Yes. <laughs> what does traveling do for you? Oh, my God. Traveling, uh, ooh, it definitely, when I'm traveling now, it's mostly because I need to get away. Yes. And if I go for work, I make it fast. So it's in okay. and out. It doesn't yes. matter. It could be another country. I'm like, right. I want to come back the next day. Right. But when I take time off, it's mostly to clear my mind. Mm-hmm. Just to regroup Mm -hmm. and get myself together. And um, it's it's just about sitting still. You know, when Ah. some people go on vacation, they want to be doing this, doing that. I like to go someplace where I could really meditate Mm -hmm. and sit still and just clear my mind. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it gives you clarity. It gives me clarity. And peace. Yes. Yeah. And even if I'm not sitting still, it's doing something that I love. Like, I love to ski. I love to play tennis. So, you know, it's just nice to be there in the mountains yeah. I kind of let myself become one with the mountain, okay. if that makes any sense. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. And it's so good for my mind because I feel like I'm up so high and I like to push myself and I feel like no one is there with me. So yeah. it gives me, I'm zen. I'm yeah. like really You're in, the, in a special zone. Yes. Yeah. And myself. one with nature. Yes. And just allowing what yes. whatever comes to come and releasing whatever you need to release. Exactly. And then all yeah. I think the other thing about mountains, at least for me, is that whenever I see them or I, I'm in their presence at the foot of a mountain or yeah. whatever, um, I often think, oh my gosh, it's my a- crap is 
so small. Yes. So small. And these majestic Stick. mountains. Yes. And that's what it, uh, yeah. I look up like the other are day. Everything. I went skiing and we were having lunch at the base of where I skied down. Yes. And I looked up and I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Did you just ski from, from up, up there? there to down there? <laughs> and, you know, it's just something that's like, oh, my God. It's like, it, I can't even explain. It's just like so, such a reward. Yeah. It's like, wow. Yeah. It's like when you do a hike up a mountain and yes. you, you look down. You're yes. like, oh, my God, did I do that? I just did that. And you did it by being one with yes. nature. Yes. Very cool. And overcoming your fear. Overcoming yes. your fear. Oh, I, I love that transition. Yes. Thank you for that, Amoy. I mean, okay. <laughs> so let's talk about fear a little bit. Is there anything that you're afraid of or that you fear? And if so, um, how do you get around that? Um, because I, to me, you seem unstoppable. You seem that even though you have um, obstacles, you just, you literally just power through them. So if, yeah. you, if there's anything that you fear, how do you get around that? Uh, if there's anything that I fear, I push myself to do it. Like uh, I didn't really know how to to be a really good swimmer because I always had a fear <laughs> of if I did, couldn't touch the bottom of the pool yes. or the ocean, yes. I was going to drown. Yeah. So I made it my purpose to take swimming lessons there you go. and to train like I'm really – my friends, <laughs> I'm up at 6 o'clock. They're like, what are you – are you in the pool? Are you serious? Because I wanted to be able to get over that fear yes. and to, to train in deep waters yep. that oh, wow. I can't feel the bottom of the ocean anymore. I can't feel the bottom of the pool, and I, I could survive. Yes. So that was definitely one of my biggest fears. Okay. And I was I didn't have a fear of height, but learning to ski of course um definitely Got helped me to that. overcome a lot of things because I was like if I could do that and started it at such a late age, mm -hmm. like anyone could overcome. You know, my friends I have a friend, she wants to ski, but yeah. she has afraid of she's scared of heights. <laughs> that whole and we went the other day and she was like, Girl, I'm never gonna be able to do this because <laughs> I'm scared of heights and I was like, No, and I'm trying to wean her in. And I was like, no, next season we're going to go again and we're going to take it slow. Wow. And we went for the first time and I watched her and I was yes. like, okay, so she got over the fear of even getting on skis. So right. next season, yes. she's really going to get on a little hill. Yes. And the next season is going to be better and better and better. Little baby so, steps. Yeah, baby steps. Yeah. And I feel like when you do that and you just take your mind out of the fear, yes. you're, you're good. I also had a fear of skiing. And I, yeah. to, to your point, like you, I just did it. Yeah. Because I didn't want to be afraid exactly. of something Exactly. And nothing is going to so happen. People think they're going to break their legs. They're gonna, that's only <laughs> if you're reckless and you're trying to do a black diamond and you can't ski. You're, that's never going to happen. You fall. Falling is a part of it. And you get back right. up. Up, and you do it again. And you do it again. Yeah. Well, personally, I prefer yellow, pink, and white diamonds. So no black diamonds for Dr. Shirley. <laughs> You'll get there. You oh, okay. We'll see. <laughs> and you have skied Aspen. You've skied Colorado. You've skied, oh, my God, Cochevelle. You've yeah. skied Switzerland. You you are fearless. I so admire that about you. Every time I come in, I'm like, hey, how are you, Moy? What's going on? Oh, I just came back from skiing. Yeah. Crickets. I'm like, okay, great. Nice. <laughs> okay, so. Besides getting over your fear of yeah. things, um, what else do you like to learn about? Um, oh my God, I definitely I like to learn different languages, different cultures, mm. different uh, foods. I'm always, you know, trying different things. Like right now, I mean, I when I was working a lot in Paris, I did learn some French. Yes, um, you know. Monsieur. Uh, getting back into it now, and I'm actually like about to take some more classes. And you. I just want to learn. I'm always teaching myself different things, um. and I, I mean. That's what life is for me. So this is like one big learning experience, mm -hmm. one and big experience. and yeah, and I just started getting into yoga. I love it. So, so you I, and I went can do yoga classes yeah, together. Exactly, wonderful. So, yeah. So in January, I took a vacation to the Maldives, and oh. there was a yoga instructor every day that was given to us. And I was like, oh my god, I've been saying I wanted to do this, and There's I absolutely love it. Isn't it amazing? It's, oh my God, just the meditation, your mind, your body, your soul. You, you just become one with wherever you are. But how about sometimes just doing nothing and holding a pose? Yes. Keeps you so focused yes. on, yes, your pain. Yes. <laughs> but it also teaches you to, as they say, just, you know, take it beyond yes. the mat. And whatever yes. kind of pain you're experiencing, just to be able to fully experience yes. it, process it, be still with yes. it, and be able to overcome it that way. So yes. I, I'm a huge yoga fan. It yeah. actually really helps me in my daily life. So you talked about learning about cultures and different languages. Um, if you were to do your career over, and I, you have had and continue <laughs> to have 
an epic career. Okay. If you were, if, you know, if somebody rubbed a genie lamp and said, Amoy, you have another career, what would it be? I would probably be a chef. What? I love to cook. Really? And, like, I'm a chef groupie. My friend, <laughs> we, I went to this restaurant the other day. I was like, oh, my God, I met Thomas Keller. Really? And I was in the kitchen, and she was like, who, what? Yeah. And she was, I was like, girl, you don't know who Thomas Keller is? What's wrong with oh you? Oh, my God. <laughs> so I'm obsessed with cooking. Okay. My mom had a restaurant, yes. and I think that was it. Just the love of food. Um, what it does for people. It brings yes. people together. I love to cook for my friends. People. Yes. And I like to take my time and do it. I think because I'm creative, I don't really have to uh, read ingredients. I kind of make things my own. Yes. So I love that. And I follow, you know, amazing chefs. I love Jean George, Thomas Keller. It's just, you know, so many great chefs in the city. So when I get a chance... And I'd have friends that know them. I'm like, you yeah. better introduce me to him. Oh, Yeah, so for my birthday coming yes. up in September, I told my friend, I said, listen. He was like, what do you want for your birthday? And I was like, I want to cook in John George's kitchen. Oh, my goodness. Or, or Thomas Keller's kitchen. And he was like, okay, I'll try to make it happen. <laughs> Pressure. So, yeah, so I love doing that because it brings food. Yes. I like to feed people. I yes. think it brings people together. Yes. In any home, yes. the heart of the home is the kitchen. Absolutely. And this is where people always gather. Yeah, so and it's I social, just enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I may be able to make an introduction for you. Oh, I may have a couple of friends oh, in the I oh, I know food you industry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm such a foodie. Oh my gosh. Okay, so just a few other questions. I I, I love digging, at, you know, digging deeper into your fabulous life. Um, so. How is it? I know how your clients feel when they emerge from your salon mm-hmm. because I personally feel transformed. Yeah. <laughs> and and I know you said it's just hair, but right. sometimes you know I don't wear makeup unless I have to be mm-hmm. someplace or look a certain way. But sometimes it's just those little things that yeah. really make the difference and give you a little extra pep in your step. And believe me, I've tried to do what you do at home; it doesn't <laughs> work. It just doesn't work. So I know how your clients feel when right. they emerge from your salon. I mean, almost like invincible, like oh, breath of fresh air, all of that. Mm-hmm. But how do you feel when you recognize that you're actually transforming oh a man or a woman's life and how they it feel about themselves? It feels really good. And um, sometimes I take my little moments. You know, I have mm-hmm. clients that overcome certain illness and they come and, you know, I make them a wig or just yes. whatever. And they just love or they're going through something and they're like, girl, I need my hair done. I'm going through something. And yes. You know, I've had clients that get out the chair and they cry or, oh. you know, they they have a family member that passed and they're yeah. like, I just need to, a new hairstyle. Right. So, you know, they come in. Oh, and I just needed to t- get that yeah. energy out of my hair. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I'm always glad to do that for them. And it makes yeah. me feel really good. Yeah. And it actually makes my day better mm. knowing that my clients are happy. Yeah. My father once asked me, um, what is your purpose? Yes. And I, I was like, what are you talking about? I don't know. My dad, <laughs> don't ask me that. I party and hang out. <laughs> but when I was uh, maybe 24, mm-hmm. 20, it was before my 25th birthday, yes. I was like, oh, my God, this is my purpose. And it, it was just not only doing here, but yes. making a woman feel good. Good. Yes. And just people in general. And it, I just felt like I just have something to give back. Yes. And so that was fulfilling for me. Yeah. And it just it just makes me feel really good to I know am... that I could do something that I love, make money from it, yeah. but still have some money feel good. Absolutely. And look good. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm all about the looking good, too. And the feeling good, of course. Yes. <laughs> so, you, so you would say then that your purpose is... Helping to make people beautiful. Yes, and help themselves. You know, sometimes, you know, like I know a lot of hairstylists, they don't share their tricks. Their tri- but I love to teach my clients. Yes, you do. I've noticed And that. I'm like, you know, this is what you need to take home. This is what you need to buy. Because I feel like, you know, when you're out there and if I taught you to do something with your hair the right way, you're always going to represent me. That's right. And it's not just about looking good when you're out the chair. It's looking good when you leave yeah, the salon. That's right. So that makes me feel really good. And, you know, it's just nice to see. Well, I hope I represent <laughs> you well when I leave the salon because I know there are some times that I walk in and you're like, hi, Dr. Shirley, no, you sit always in the chair. Do. You always look great. <laughs> Thank so. you. So what would you consider that you are most grateful for? A fabulous career, truly <sighs> supportive family. Yes. Lots of uh, friends who adore you. A, a great life, continuing to evolve yes. and grow and learn. So what are you most grateful for? I'm grateful that I stuck with my passion mm. and just, you know, the woman that I've become. Yes. 
and um, the experiences that I've, I've gained from doing what I've done. I mean, people always say, oh, what do you... but I feel like I take away from every woman that sit in my chair. Uh-huh. I mean, like you, I met you. You're yes, beautiful. Thank you're wonderful. You. You're Takes always one to know happy. One. Yes. And with your work, is I'm sure it's stressful. Like oh, yes. you're really like cutting people, <laughs> so it's like love. there's no messing up there. <laughs> no. And what I love about you is that you know you always do that go the holistic approach. I mean, That's uh, important I think to me. yeah. one time we were talking, and I was like, "What do you recommend for clients that come in for like you know they want all these changes?" And you're like. You have to start from within. Absolutely. And I remember you saying to me one time, somebody came, I think they wanted lipo or something, and you were like, you know, I'm going to give you a diet. Yeah. And if this person didn't stick to this diet before she got the lipo, why right. is she going to stick to it after? after? So, you know, just things like yeah. that. Listen, yeah. I take something away from you every day, and I know we bombard you with all these questions <laughs> no, about not at all. and I know sometimes Dr. Shoulders want to get her hair done, <laughs> and we keep asking all these medical. So now I'm like, go in her office and pay for that consultation. <laughs> Stop bothering her. So it's I take something away honor. from every woman yeah. that comes in the salon, believe it or not, and it does, I, I add it to my life, and it makes my life better. Yeah, so yeah. we also learn from you. Yes. We really do. <laughs> so what would you say your legacy would be? So you're a oh, teacher, ooh. you you are an entrepreneur. You are a fabulous businesswoman. You are um, you, you beautify people. You contribute. You're philanthropic. Yeah. So what would you say your legacy? What would you want your legacy to be? Just to give back and just to see all the young girls and, you know, women that I've worked with, just to see them become something and yeah. and what I've taught that make it so much bigger than life. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if I've touched you in any way, shape or form, whether you work for me, whether you, you know, so that's more fulfilling for me. And I always say, you know, like to an old assistant or whatever, like, oh, talk to me when your name is in lights. You want to leave now? <laughs> but let me see your name in lights. Let me see you walk in my shoe. So, you know. <laughs> Love it. So that's fulfilling. That's a little rare. Yeah, I've seen some of them and they're doing great things. And I'm like, okay, yes. now I'm proud of him. You know, yes. he learned that or she learned that from me. Right. So that's for really fulfilling. Yes. You see someone carry on what you've taught them. That's right. Well, yeah. speaking of the people who you've taught, if you could summarize in two to three lessons Mm -hmm. that you would tell young people who are interested in your industry or just young people who may not be interested in your industry but want to be entrepreneurs, two to three lessons that you've learned that help you along the way that may help someone else. Um, Definitely take um, pride in what you're doing. If you're in the beauty industry, you should look a certain way. You cannot be trying to teach someone about beauty and look in a certain way. You look a mess. So you have to take your job and um, just take what you're doing with a lot of pride. Talk your talk, walk your walk. And when there are opportunities, take it because sometimes they only come along one time. Yes. And some people might not see the opportunity, but when I when I have someone that's working for me and I see that they don't see the opportunity, yes. I pull them aside. Yes. So there's only but so many pulling aside that you could do. So you know, seize the opportunity. Yes. And look the part. Talk the talk and walk the walk. Love that. Okay. Um, and what's the most significant thing you've learned? Well, two part question. You've learned from someone else the most significant thing, and then the most significant thing you've learned about yourself through all mm. of your transitions and transformations and your growth and uh, in your industry. Yeah, someone very successful once told me mm-hmm. um, that I worked with one of my clients. Yes. Don't rush things. Ah. Um, build it brick by brick, layer by layer, mm-hmm. and you're more sustainable mm-hmm. and you will last. Don't you know? Some people try to rush things. They want this overnight thing. Yeah. But it doesn't happen no, overnight. No. It and looks that way on Instagram, it, it looks but that, it isn't. It looks that way on Instagram, <laughs> but it's not. It is and not. just take your time and you know, learn your craft, learn your industry. And what I did with my industry, I've learned it inside out, the business yes. and the creative side. Yes. So, you know, there's two sides to it. You could be super talented all you want, but if you're really building a business, you have to learn the business yes, side. I would agree so you have that. to take the time to learn. Yeah, yeah, all of it. Yeah. All of it. And what's the most significant thing you've learned about yourself? Mm-hmm. That I have a lot of patience. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. You know, in this industry, you have to have patience. Yes. You have to really... Be genuine about what you're doing yes. because people could detect the bullshit. Mm-hmm. And if you're coming with that, it's not going to work. Yeah. So you have to have patience and you have to really be real and kind and just really care in yes. person. And really care. Yes. I agree 100%. You care. 
Okay, now I asked you earlier about your Cinderella moment. <laughs> now, now that we're getting towards the end of this beautiful interview, um, tell me about your most significant aha moment. Oh my God! Like, well, you, it, something was happening, or you didn't think you could do something, and then you realize, oh my gosh! Um. So, what is your aha moment? You know, it's an Oprah question. <laughs> so, uh, next time you're on Oprah, <laughs> just let me. I'm just letting you know that I'm prepping you okay. for that interview. Right? Okay, <laughs> my most. Uh, yeah. Oh, jeez. I mean, I've had a few. Okay, good. But, I mean, op- meeting Oprah, actually. Wait a minute. We didn't even talk about the people. Wait a minute. Meeting I Oprah. I need a few more minutes. I need a few more minutes uh, on this was podcast. was definitely an aha moment. Really? Okay. Can you briefly tell us how well, that Well, I had two clients yes. that were that was booked to do her show. Yes. So we flew to Chicago. I yes. mean, she was there. But when she came out and shook my hands, wow. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, and then I had another client that did the show. So I'm I had a chance to meet her twice. That right. was great. Right. Um, another aha moment was flying the Concord. Oh my god. That gosh. was like an experience. And then I it was nice. And yeah. you know, and then doing it again yes. and again. I was like, okay. So, so your it, aha was yeah. like you recognize that this is my lane. Yes. I can do this. Yeah, I can and be it was exposed just like, to am this. I, everyday, I deserve this. Exactly. But I didn't really I just looked at it as I was going to work. Oh, so you know, because I was so young, yeah. I didn't really, I was just like, okay, they need me there in three hours. I guess the Concord is the fastest way. How else am I going to get there? <laughs> but it was practical. I did call my mother, and yes. I was like, oh, my God, I'm flying the Concord. Yeah. And it was like all these celebrities. I remember it was yeah. like Catherine Zeta-Jones, oh. uh, Simply Red. It was just like Fabulous. all the, and it was, and I expected it to be like this lavish, lush plane. Right. It was like very much like a business yeah, setting. Like, yeah. But you really got there in three hours. In three hours. Amazing. So that was an aha moment because I did, had no idea the Concord was going to go out of <laughs> service anyway. So oh. it's like, yeah, yeah. it was Cherished memory. Exactly. Cherished and memory. just like, just being at a function, like with a client, and I'll never forget, I was wash. I was at, I went to the CFDA one year with John yes. Galliano. Yes. And I was in the bathroom washing my hands, and I, before Elizabeth Taylor got yes. sick, oh. I looked up, and there she, she was. And I was like, oh my God, you're Elizabeth Taylor. So that was like my <laughs> only time that yes. I was like, oh my God, over a celebrity, because yeah. you know, seeing this. White diamonds. My right. mother oh. had white diamonds perfume all right. her life. So yes. I was like, oh, my God, that's Elizabeth It's Taylor. all true. <laughs> yeah. So that was a good, definitely ha aha moment. Good for you. And, I mean, I've had so many. So but, many. It, you know, my friends ask me, they're like, oh, my God, you're so lucky. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's just like work. Sometimes yeah. I would wake up in the country and I'm like, where am I? What country am I in? Because yeah. you're just going, 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 and you're yeah. working, trying yeah. to provide a good service and make sure everything is beautiful. But I mean, I think, yeah, it was, it's good. It always yeah. is. All right. Last, I know uh, the team's telling me to uh, speed it up here, but I can't. <laughs> this is so good. Okay. Last couple of questions. So I ask everybody, this is called the Fast Five. Okay. And I'm going to give you two choices. And you just have to say the first thing that comes to mind. Don't even think about okay. it. Okay. <laughs> so the first one, Paris or London? London. Short or long? Long. <laughs> Leather or fur? Fur. <laughs> Packed or powder? Powder. Usain Bolt or Jamaican bobsled team? Uh, Usain Bolt. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, last question, which is more so on the, you know, on the uh, uh, level of advice. What are your top five recommendations for living a most beautiful, fabulous life? Okay. Um, well, number one, definitely putting yourself first. Yes. Um, workouts. Yes. You should have some uh, diet, proper diet. Um, that will have to take the stress, no stress, you know, stress free. Yes. And just being happy. Yes. Is that five? Oh, is that four? <laughs> oh. oh, okay. So put, uh, put yourself first is number one. Workout is number two. Eat well. Have, you know, proper nutrition is number three. Be happy is number four. Yeah. And um, having good people, like-minded ah, people I love that. around you. You know, when I was younger, you know, I wanted a million friends. Yes. Um, but as I've gotten older, I've dropped, you know, people. And I realized that having... You know, good. I could probably count on my finger, like, how many friends are real friends that I could call at 4 o'clock in the morning yes. and cry. And, you know, they'll be there. So yes. keep your crowd the same 
yeah. as you. Same energy. Yeah, resonance. same energy. And take a vacation. I love it. That's yeah. number six. Take yeah. a vacation. I'm going to add it. <laughs> okay. Well, how beautiful has this been? <laughs> Thank, Thank you so you much. Thank you so Thank very you. much for your time, your beauty, your presence, Thank and you. all that you do for Aww. me and the world and all of your Thank clients. You. So, Thank you for having me. And thank you, one million audience members. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for listening to this week's episode of Forever Fab. And yes. as always, until next time, stay beautiful. And I have one more thing. And out. One more thing, number yeah, seven. A lot of times times my clients are like, girl, what can I do? And then I'm like, go see Dr. Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> go see Dr. Shirley. Amor, you have thank a you good so plastic much. surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, honey. Number seven. <laughs> a very good plastic surgeon. Yes. Thank you, Amoy. Thank you. Thank you, thank listeners. You. <laughs> until next time, stay fabulous. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Forever Fab, the podcast on fashion, the art of living, and all things beauty, curated by Dr. Shirley Madir, MD. Live beautifully and help make the world a more beautiful place.